What is up, everybody? Josh Tap here again, and welcome back to the Lucky Titan. And today we're here with Jason Howe, and this guy is the founder of Agency J. And the reason I wanted to bring him on today is this guy has been working with a lot of coaches and course creators, right? Where most of you who listen to this show, you have at least one of those services within your products. <laughs> and so we really want to talk about that today and you know how he's actually been leveraging his agency to help a lot of these agencies, excuse me, these coaches and um, course creators to scale their companies. So Jason, say what's up to everybody and then I'll top in. Hey guys, hi everyone. I'm not sure whether you guys can see me or you know just hear me, but I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, having me here, Josh. They will see you as well, so that's that's good. So, Jason, I want to ask you this, just to kind of kick it off. What was that pivotal point in your business where you realized I need to to run an agency, right? You know, it's kind of that business yeah. decision point that all of us have where we realize there's a need in the market. What was that point for yeah. you? Well, to be very honest, because I started my journey very early on as a, as a freshman in university, uh, what I really did was just freelance work, just trying to figure out what it is that I wanted in my life. But I would say um, very much after I left um, the university and finished with my first job, um, that was, I guess, the turning point at a, time, at a point in time. Um, I would have done it a lot earlier if I had a choice, but because I was on a full ride scholarship um, with the college and that was, I was going to, and I also, as part of that full ride scholarship, needed to serve the one of the government agencies for two years. I didn't have uh, another choice to, you know, kind of just break the bond and decide to hop into this full time. I would reckon that I was actually a few years late because first of all, during my journey, I was actually offered a role to join. Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys are familiar with AppSumo. I was actually given a role um, or offered a role by Noah Kagan to join them to do paid traffic for them. That was back in 2015. And then 2016, I actually partnered up with um, a guru to run ads for the likes of Golden State Warriors, The Economist, a lot of its big brands. Um, and then after that, I kind of just, you know, did things on my own after I left the agency. So I did realize it very early on, I guess, in terms of turning point, but I wasn't really able to act until I finished with my kind of like the stint you know, at a government agency back in 2018. So that's where I really got started with the agency. See, and I love that because there's a lot of people who do digital marketing, right? You know, and I'm, I'm kind of guilty of this as well. I was in college when I started my first agency and I remember nice. just feeling like, you know what? I have to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, at the time I had never run an ad in my life. And, and you know, a lot, of, a lot of agencies are built that way, you know, in their mom and mom and dad's basement. Where exactly. you know, with you, you have that corporate experience. It's really intriguing to me to watch actually, you know, a couple of different people who've done this, where they, they take their corporate experience running multi-million dollar ad budgets, and then they bring it yeah. down to people like us who, you know, must might have smaller ad budgets, but you know, you're able to convert a lot better, right? <laughs> than most people exactly. because you understand how it works at scale. So exactly. you know, walking me through kind of your methodology. So let's let's I'm just going to give you an example as a coach, right? I have done yeah. a lot of coaching in the past. I have a group coaching program. It's a $10,000 price point. Where would you start with somebody like that? You know, I've, I've already made some good sales. I've got a decent funnel, but, but how would you recommend moving forward? Yeah. So we nowadays, um, the advice I give to anyone that I speak to is if you don't have a working funnel with paid ads that you're spending at least like a hundred to $200 a day that you are converting profitably, you're not ready to hire an agency. Uh, I keep telling coaches, you know, it, it doesn't matter which agency you hire, like there's nine out of 10 chance you're going to feel burnt. Um, and it's not exactly going to be the agency spot is um, purely a matter of timing. So I think you need to understand the economics or anyone who looks looking to hire an agency or want to work with an agency needs to understand the economics behind um, hiring an agency. You're hiring them, you're definitely going to pay a retainer, which is kind of like an ongoing cost that you're going to incur. And you're basically getting back time to work on other things. So I would always tell people, you know, whether they're making 20, 20K, I'll tell them if you do not have, uh, you're not converting your clients from leads they're coming from paid traffic, then run your paid traffic yourself first. Get it up to a point where you're generating $30,000, $40,000 worth of sales from paid traffic, you know, across a number of months. You get some sort of consistency there. So, you know, it's not a one hit wonder. And that's when I think you're ready to really explore working with an agency. Um, and I find that when I work with clients like that, my success rate with them is close to 100%. But when I start accepting clients, they're at 10K, 5K mark. They're like, you know, I've made a ton of organic sales even. 
um, our success rates you know, can be as low as 25 to 30%. So these days we have a very strict policy. If we come across somebody and they're not ready for ads, they're not ready for ads. We're not going to rush them. We're simply going to give them advice and tell them, hey, you've got a great offer. You've validated, you have good organic traffic. In fact, we've got clients who came to us when they have bought in a million dollars a year in organic sales. And they come to us and say, hey, I'm ready to, to botch on paid ads. But even for them, because they have never run paid traffic or never made paid traffic work for their business, it still takes a bit of time for them to do the testing and for them to get things working. There are so many iterations that you need to do to your webinar in order to change and tweak the message such that it will work with a completely cold traffic. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a really cool methodology, right? Because that gives you a benchmark. You know, if you're not at that point where you're spending a hundred dollars a day, you know, you're really not ready to hire an agency. And I love that you you bring that to play because I know for us you know, we early on, we tried to hire agencies and we weren't even spending a dollar in ads. Right. And we'd spend all this money getting them, you know, paying them to come work for us and, and make our ads. And then they're like, well, where are your ads? <laughs> well, that's what you're yeah. here for. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't believe you really need an agency until you've, like you said, proven the offer, because once the offer is proven and, and the sales happen, the ad agency is going to blow it up. Right. They're not going to be there exactly. to, <laughs> to, to make your offer better for you especially if it's just an, an ad agency. Exactly. So with, with you, you know, with your own company and generating leads for yourself, and I want to ask you this question because it's always an interesting response when you ask an ad agency, how do you get business? What's kind of your number one lead source for your company, Jason? Yeah, so while well, number one lead source are actually recommendations from our existing clients. Um, and secondly, because I started my, when I first started my journey freelancing and everything, I built kind of like a personal brand online. I've, you know, written a lot of blog posts very early on. I was associated with Social Media Examiner, Agora Pulse, Ad Espresso, and all the early kind of influencer kind of platforms for social media marketing. Um, and as a result, people kind of know me. Uh, they, they, they know me, what I do and how I'm positioned. Uh, and therefore, like, you know, even if they, didn't think of working with me at a point in time. I have people writing to me two, three years later asking me, hey, you know, you're the guy and I've read up your blog post. I absolutely love it. Um, and I've always thought of one, one thing to work with you one day. Um, and now my business is ready. So uh, I would say that my biggest source, come, sources of, of, of sales uh, for the agency comes, definitely comes from our assistant clients, uh, as well as uh, our organic kind of like presence on, on, you know, on Facebook. Yeah. Love that. And it's funny to watch because depending on, on the business that you have, right. And then the industry you're in different types of marketing work better, you know, obviously referral sales, that's just where that's the best. And for agencies like ours, you know, where we are a high, high ticket agency, same as you, yeah. you almost don't need ads as much <laughs> to scale because yeah. you're getting enough, you're getting almost too many leads to be able to actually convert, you know, you know, I'm saying like, you can't really onboard that many yeah. people in any, any given month. So, yeah. um, it's really intriguing to me to just see the other ways that you're doing it. So let's talk through Jason, how, like who, the, the who, right? Mm -hmm. So in your company, and I'm just going to ask you this kind of a twofold question, right? For your company and for, you know, a coaching business or something that's doing half a million in revenue, who is the who, who do you hire? What, what's the, what's the first thing you outsource? Is it your fulfillment? Is it your marketing? Is it your sales? What do you recommend? Yeah, so I would say uh, just based on my own experience, very early on, the first person I hired was actually um, a client success manager, someone who would take the load off my mind uh, of having to respond quickly to clients, to handle things like any instructions or briefs from the clients, to follow up with clients on things that we need, for example, questionnaires getting filled out or customer interviews that we need to do or um, getting our ads approved and reviewed, um, those things. Um, basically, I got a client success manager to do it for us. So that's the first person. Um, and then we actually experimented with many different people uh, after that, many different roles, uh, because we, we kind of restructured our agency several times. I was building my agency based on what I think will work best. Um, and you know, we kind of took several iterations before we found a structure that really worked and scaled. And that was after talking with uh, many other agency owners as well. And we found that not every agency structure works for us uh, because you know we are different as well. Just just everyone is different. Um, so I would say the next biggest kind of like um, uh, 
shift that we experienced as an agency was when I hired a, a, a skilled copywriter. When I brought on, you know, a, 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 an Australian copywriter as well as a Canadian copywriter, we got two copywriters at the moment in the team. And they were so good. Like, you know, they literally came on and not only did I not have to worry anymore about copy, but they actually took it to the next level. They actually wrote copy that was just like, oh, wow. I looked at it, I was like, okay, because I need to decline already. You know, whereas in the past when I, you know, kind of hired um, people who were mixed with media buying and copy, the copy was like so-so and the media buying is like so-so. Um, and, and that created a lot of trouble. Um, so yeah, I think like, you know, if there's any AGC owner listening today, I would say hundred percent hire someone good, just pay the money and you, you know, get many falls in return. Um, as for the copywriter, however, we, I, I personally am trained somewhat in copy so I can distinguish between good and bad copy. So I actually went through, like, I would say easily a hundred applications and only shortlisted three copywriters. And this is coming from a hundred, like so-called qualified copywriters uh, because not every copywriter writes good copy. Most of them are great at positioning themselves because they've bought some course and you know they're charging really highly. And I know a lot of copywriters will probably hate me for saying this, but I would say a lot of them are more fluff than, than uh, material. Um, and we were, I was just really lucky to be honest to come across these two copywriters. Uh, they're just awesome people. Um, and uh, they, you know, they, they, they just love writing. They're not out there trying to to, to make a quick buck and it shows in their work, it shows in their attitude, it shows in their work ethic. Um, so copywriter is the, is, the, is the second hire and the third hire is actually a media manager, someone to replace me because I was media buying trained. So um, really letting go of managing client campaigns, you know, just allow us to grow that much faster. I was just sharing my team that compared to two years ago, we have grown three times and compared to last year since COVID, we have actually grown about 100%. Um, so, you know, the growth has been huge for us. Um, and, you know, without, without passing it on to someone, without training them, without putting everything that I know into frameworks, processes and steps, sure enough, you can never capture 100% of what you do, but you can at least capture the 80% and just coach the remaining 20% based on case by case scenarios as they come along. And that has really created a huge shift for us as an agency. And, you know, we have been our most profitable this year. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, well, as for coaching businesses, uh, now on the second part of the question, um, I honestly am not the best person to ask in terms of hiring because, you know, we have not built a coaching business ourselves from scratch. However, just based off what I've known from our own clients, um, definitely getting an admin person to come in and help out with the day-to-day -day stuff um, and also helping out with some of your appointment scheduling follow-up. So appointment setting would be really helpful as well. And I would say a third role is really hiring coaches to help you fulfill. So those three things, I would say are kind of like the, the, the reflection of you know, the equivalent of a copywriter, uh, a media manager and a client success manager in an agency. So I, I feel like you know, that there is almost some uh, things that they could apply and, and learn in a coaching company as well. But I, I, you know, I just think that just based off what my clients have done, those three roles are the roles that I think have been most impactful in helping the business grow for sure. That's awesome. Well, and I love that you mentioned that because it, again, it's, it's different depending on industry, but what most people don't realize when they look at a company, especially in the digital age with these, with being a digital entrepreneur, there's only three things you have to fill. There's three roles. You have marketing, sales, and fulfillment. And so, yeah. you know, what, what of those is your biggest roadblock right now? And most people will say, oh, it's my sales. When in all reality, it's probably not your sales. It's probably you don't yeah. have good quality leads or enough leads. That's, that's been yeah. my experience at least. <laughs> Yeah. And you're, you're probably not sucking at sales. It's usually just, you know, you're in the room with the wrong person. And, I totally uh, agree. It's just so totally funny to watch agree. that, you know, that, that, uh, I guess that miscommunication that people have or that misconception where they think, oh, it is, yeah. it's always sales, but it usually isn't that that's usually not the problem. Exactly. I, I think like, you know, if I could just share a quick story here, um, we, we suffer from the very same situation, I would say up to the end of last year. What happened was I worked with um, Joe Away's team. So Joe Away is, a, you know, one of the webinar gurus and he teaches people like the, the, the what they call the, I think it's the power offer. Um, so funny, right? As an agency, we had to hire them, you know, to, to create our webinar funnel. Um, but I thought they were the best in business. So I worked with them. 
And their copywriter, uh, Brian Mead, is, is basically the person that helped us to craft and reposition our offer. Like we already do all the right things because our, our, our fulfillment is really awesome. Like our systems in place and everything is great, but we just didn't know how to sell it. Uh, really funny, you know, for a marketer ourselves, we don't really know how to sell one thing, but you know, it's so <laughs> <Pretty> common. <typical. laughs> exactly. So after the consulting session with this copywriter, like ever since that day, um, my closing rate on sales has been like 100%. Um, and we only, there's that not 100% only when we reject clients, we turn clients down. Um, in fact, right now I have four clients that we held off just because we are max capacity and we told them like, you know, if you really want to work with us, gotta work, we got to wait until November because we're going to bring on someone in October and then we need around a month of trading. Um, so they all said yes. So uh, anyway, coming back to that, I would say, yeah, the copywriter was just great. He looked at our offer. He was like, no, this is not what you guys should do. This is what you guys should say. I was just like, yeah, now they make sense. You know, like that, that when he told us like, you know, he's worked with so many agencies and this is the first time he's heard of like A, B, and C. I was like, oh, are you serious? So like just, just focusing our messaging of the agency around those three points. Wow. Like the quality of the people that have come to us to want to work with us has been amazing. And even when I do outbound, for example, I'm part of a couple of memberships where they also offer their members leads, you know, if you pass their certification and the test, and I've done them a long time ago. So I reach out and often, you know, these leads are kind of get like people who are going to get 10, 20 different emails. And I have no issues getting them to respond and I have no issues getting them on a call and no issues closing them purely because of the messaging and the things that took away from that, you know, that, that call with, um, with the copywriter from, from Joe Away's agency. So I'm very grateful, even though it cost a shit ton of money, um, it, was, it was money well spent for sure. <laughs> Yeah. So that seems to be typically what happens. I, I, so I come from a family of entrepreneurs and I always watched nice. um, other entrepreneurs, even in my own family fail because they're, they're trying to say, how can I do this without spending money? And that's just <laughs> not the case. I, I don't believe in building a business for free from scratch because I, I know I tried to do it for three years and never made yeah. any significant amount of money until I yeah. started saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to go into debt and I'm going to make some strategic decisions that cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that's when our business started to take off because nice. I think it's just a principle of sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like that is one thing, but also just being okay with failing and wasting money. So I hired three different coaches. Um, our first coach was like a complete disaster. It's one of the biggest group coaching program out there. And I know if I say the name, everyone know it, but they were a complete disaster. Um, it was terrible. We paid like $10,000 for almost like nothing in return. Um, we hired a second coach and it was like $5,000. Same thing. They, I mean, we agreed on deliverables. And when I became a client, he told me, he changed the deliverables, right? Basically got me to try and change my industry to work on like an industry I had no interest in. Um, like granted, I could have done better due diligence. There's definitely things that I could have done better. I'm not like shirking responsibility. Um, but what I'm saying is, despite all the failures, I still continue investing and eventually we found really good people. Um, the third one I invested in was Todd Brown and Todd Brown really worked out really well. He introduced me to the whole idea of messaging and really uh, honing our agency's messaging. And we took that same framework he, he teaches us to do the messaging for all of our clients. It's been really useful. Um, and then, of course, the fourth one was not a coaching program. It was basically working with Joe Away. So I would say we have invested over like $40,000 working with coaches and, you know, just hiring agencies outside. Uh, and, and I, I refer only to the high ticket ones. We have invested in a lot of, you know, mid ticket or lower ticket courses, $2,000, $1,000. I'm just not counting those. But yeah, I would say once you get used to it, like, and, and, and you know, be okay, even if you fail to find um, like someone from your first five thousand dollar investment. Um, you know, continue. You know, keep pushing on. As long as you're earning an income, you can earn back the money again. You can reinvest again, and you know, you will multiply eventually. And I'm pretty sure, like you know, that's like probably what a lot of people experience as well. You're not going to find the right coach from 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 the get go. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And it's coaching such an interesting thing because I 100% believe in in getting a coach. I think the problem that most people have though, is they think that that's going to be their salvation, their road out. 
But when yeah. you hire a coach, they're going to immediately tell you to start spending more money. That's just how it is. And not sometimes <laughs> it's with them. Sometimes it's hiring an agency or buying a product. There's always something they're going to be telling you to do. So you have to be prepared yeah. with that and come with the capital yeah. preparations is, is my, my personal belief, you know, have, have enough yeah. lines of credit or something that you can pull from, or, you know, maybe your own 401k or whatever that you can pull from. Yeah. But I think people fall into that same trap. Like you said, you know, they'll spend $10,000 on this coaching program thinking it's going to be, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened to them. And I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of spending $25,000 on multiple different types of coaching and being like, you know, <laughs> I probably could have got away with their course, you know, not needing the actual yeah. coaching, you know? And I think a lot of people fall in that trap where it's like, oh, I need to spend money on coaching where in all reality, you can get a fantastic coach without even paying for it. If you just find somebody who's more successful than you in the industry, who doesn't have a coaching program, they're usually willing to coach you and be kind of on your side, right. <laughs> to be mm -hmm. your friend on it and, and hold you accountable to it. Um, so, so Jason, you know, we, you know, we've been going for here for about 20 minutes at this point, but I just want to ask you, you know, kind of about your motivation and where you're, you're finding, um, like what your next goals are for your company. And mm -hmm. so for you guys, where you're currently at, what's kind of the next big target where, where are you guys running for right now? Yeah. Um, I kind of figured out the entire agency game and found that it's, it's not really that fun because ultimately to go an agency, you, you hire people, you take on a couple more clients, you hire another people person. So it's kind of like just adding hit count, going back to take on more clients, you know, uh, it's, it's a, the game is honestly getting boring uh, but our purpose has always been to work with great coaches and course creators and just putting their programs which we know changes lives into the hands of as many people as possible I would say I am incredibly blessed that we have over a dozen clients who are just fantastic they're just amazing human beings with great programs with just fantastic results not like you know any of the coaches i've hired previously um but i, I would say our goal right now actually is uh, we are looking to start our own e-commerce brand uh we are in the midst of exploring the logistics side of things and working on the packaging and uh, the 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 offer as well uh we have actually gotten um, a sales copy written we're just looking to create a packaging to you know, put everything premium proper on a Shopify store and kind of start selling it uh, just to gauge the demand before we, you know, start producing the product. So um, that's where we hate it. Uh, and as a team, I think we're all getting excited about like taking our years and years of training into kind of putting it into something that we own um, as a team. And I you know everyone is like, you know, really hyped up about it. Um, the agency at the end of the day, I would say is going to exist um, as, as a training ground uh, for new people who want to pick up digital marketing skills, of course, only, you know, those who, who can catch up to the speed because the pace of an agency life is, is very fast and it's definitely not for everyone. Uh, then separately, uh, it's also a place for our more experienced folks who want to give back. We have several people on the team as well who are at a stage in their life where they're like, they've seen it all, done it all, and they're like, they just want to teach the younger folks. They want to share with them what they've learned. You know, they just want to lead the way. And it's a great opportunity for them to do that as well because they're doing a lot of internal consulting. And then I guess if any one of them wants to advance their career, hopefully if the e-commerce brand works out, they can, they can join us over in the e-commerce company. And I, I think that's where we will see a lot more growth and scale with the business as well. Remind me after this call, I want to connect you with Steven Somers. He's like the king of e-commerce and he's, oh, I know awesome. he has like a coaching program, but as we were just talking with coaching, yeah. I would just be, that'd be somebody I would work with if I were you, not even for coaching, but um, yeah. they have a really good business for getting e-com out there quick. Um, awesome, Jason. Well, I appreciate you coming on. So let me, let me ask you a couple of final questions here. So the first question is, uh, where can people find you and agency J? Yeah, uh, the easiest way to look for us is at agencyj.co, it's .co at the end. Uh, we do have an intake form. Um, you can uh, fill in the details. Uh, currently, uh, honestly, we don't have any Kalani openings until like late September because we're not taking any clients until like, you know, I would say earliest is really November. Uh, just based on projections right now, uh, we, we, do, uh, we are currently already looking for a media buyer. And this time around, compared to what we did in the past, we are looking only for people with at least two years of experience. So they can hit the ground running. Uh, but of course, we still need to do some internal training and testing and things like that. Um, but yeah, so, so agencyj.co is the best place to look for us. Love that. Well, then just to ask you one final question, Jason, um, if you could give us one final parting piece of guidance, what would that be? Um, 
Yeah, I, in fact, I think I've shared this with several folks recently. Um, I think the biggest lesson I've learned is to solve problems in the right sequence. Um, I think what you focus on expense, which is what a lot of people would say, but how do you choose what you focus on? And it's, it's really just as key. It's really important as an entrepreneur that you are focusing and on solving the right problem at a point in time. If let's say you have a fulfillment issue and you try to solve problems with sales or with lead generation, it's going to set you back so much more. So really ask yourself, what is, you know, what is the most pressing and most important problem to solve right now? And kind of like sequence out the entire list of problems that you have and tackle them one at a time. Um, and we have found the most growth right after we tackle um, really problems in sequence. And that's basically what we've experienced so far with our agency.